the majority of the frack operations we use today are, are water-based fracks, using a lot of water and sand with some additives to help it make it more efficient and help make sure that the, the sand mixture gets out into the formation that we're looking for. So the first thing we do is we drill a well down into the target horizon. So drilling the well will typically have several different size of holes as we drill down. We start by setting a surface casing some 2,200 feet below the surface. This consists of a pipe that, is, uh, that we put cement behind. Typically this is just over 12 inches in diameter. Then we drill down further with what we uh, call an intermediate string, set another intermediate casing, cement behind that as well, to provide further isolation from the groundwater and other hydrocarbon producing zones that we have in the Haynesville area like Cotton Valley and Hostin. Then finally we go down with our production string and we drill through the curve as we call it to where we project out horizontally some four to five thousand feet and uh, complete this well bore. Then we use a lot of equipment on the surface. For instance in Haynesville we have over 40,000 horsepower of pumps that are stacked on a very small five acre site. And we connect it all together and we pump a significant amount of fluid, um, 10 to 15,000 barrels per stage. And we'll start out at the end and typically these wells will have some 12 to 14 stages. And uh, we'll start at the end, we'll perforate out on the end and then pump um, some 130 to 150,000 barrels of fluid. Um, only, only a twelfth of that per stage but pump it out here with sand and then we'll set a plug, uh, perforate holes in the pipe, and then pump the next stage and work our way out of the well bore. At the end, we'll come in here and clean out the sand with a coil tubing unit and then flow the hydrocarbons back to surface. Once we pump the stage and we've got that sand put out in the reservoir, uh, we flow it back and we recover some portion of the water. Right now, it's uh, in our gas operations. We recover somewhere around 10% of the, the fluid out of the reservoir before we start seeing natural gas and oil come, come to the surface that we, that we sell. In some of our lower pressure reservoirs or uh, other conventional reservoirs, we do use nitrogen or CO2 as a carrier for the, the prop and the sand that we use to prop open the reservoir. There's really two concerns that are raised by environmentalists. The first one is protection of groundwater. The, the uh, concern that they have is through our drilling operations or through the, the fracturing that will somehow contaminate the surface water that are being used by communities and by farms. The way we protect against that is really twofold. One, we ensure in drilling that we have pipe and cement that isolates the groundwater from our well bore to ensure that that, that is protected. And then also as we drill and, and before we do fracturing operations, we test the integrity of the entire well bore to make sure that that uh, we don't have to worry about the energy from that fracturing operation that's some two miles down in the earth crust to somehow get back up into the groundwater horizon. The second thing that people are concerned about is the significant use of water. First of all, while we do use a lot of water in our frac operation, it pales in comparison to many different industries out there, whether it's the power industry, the coal industry, or even golf courses, which are significant consumers of fresh water. Uh, that being said, we're still concerned about fresh water use and uh, we're currently piloting uh, cleaning up of produced water to use for frac operations and studying several different areas in which we hope in the future will we'll significantly reduce the amount of fresh water that we use in our fracking operations.